I would like to welcome you all to this session on dynamic analysis of railway bridges as per Euroco. The requirements are quite strict for the design of high-speed railway bridges, as well as the complexity of the design process increases significantly as compared to those of normal railway bridges. The emphasis of this session will be put on dynamic analysis and on generation and application of loads coming from high-speed trains. We will also look at the new feature, the train load generator, to generate dynamic nodal loads for, for the bridge. This session is recommended to engineers and academics who are interested in learning about the design of bridges for high-speed rail or who are working on design uh, that require dynamic analysis or someone who is looking to improve their knowledge of finite element analysis. So without any further ado, let's dive in in today's uh, topic. So the contents that we are going to cover in today's presentation are as follows. First, we will see uh, when is dynamic analysis required? What are the things that drives the requirement of dynamic analysis? Then we will see the Eurocode pro provisions that are in place to carry out dynamic analysis of the bridge. Then, as you know, for any dynamic analysis, first we need to run a free vibration analysis. Then we will look at the setup of a free vibration analysis or eigenvalue analysis in the program. Then we come to time history analysis. Then we will move on to generation of dynamic loads using the new train load generator function. Then we will see interpret the results. And all, all this we will carry out with a simple bridge example. Okay, so if you have any questions regarding anything during the talk, you can use the chat features uh, and post your questions and I would try to answer all of them at the end of the webinar or I will try to answer them in between as well. Okay, so let's start today's topic which is dynamic analysis of railway bridges. For speed above 200 kilometers, the effect of re resonance comes into picture. Since in many cases, it is the governing factor which decides the structural form. However, earlier, the classical approach was followed for bridge design. The classical approach of bridge design is to use a static analysis uh, to calculate the forces in uh, flexion under certain moving load and consider dynamic amplification factor to account for the effect, uh, to account for the dynamic effect uh, of trade. So if you know in HS1, this approach was uh, used to take into account the dynamic, dynamic effect. However, certain issues uh, were observed uh, in the first French HSL project uh, between Paris and Lyon. And uh, these effects were uh, the resonance phenomena, uh, the ballast degradation uh, took place, and there was a rapid deterioration of uh, track and short span structures were specially affected uh, by this resonance phenomena. <clears throat> so in a joint effort in uh, Europe, a committee named ERRID 214 was constituted to study these problems which occurred in this project. And following conclusions were drawn by the company, uh, committee for uh, train speeds over 200 km per hour. So they found out that uh, there is a likelihood of resonance effect uh, when speed goes up beyond this limit. And uh, dynamic amplification factor is unable to predict the resonance effect. Uh, so hence the static analysis in combination with dynamic amplification factor was not uh, adequate for uh, such type of structures. And uh, deck acceleration must be assessed. So uh, it was seen that deck acceleration was quite high due to which the serviceability conditions of the ballast were affected, as well as the contact between the rail 
and the train uh, was affected, which lead, which led to the rapid track deterioration. So uh, the committee established a series of rules and guidelines for design assessment of the bridge. And these guidelines have been implemented now in Eurocode. So what we see in Eurocode is basically the conclusions of the committee on this particular issue. Okay, uh, so now let's move on. So what, is, what happens when resonance and dynamic magnification happen? So when we compare ballasted and ballastless track, so ballast, uh, in ballasted tracks, ballast grain lose its uh, grain interlock. So the problem of resonance manifests in different ways depending on the type of structure. So if ballasted tracks are used and deck acceleration is greater than 0.7 g, where g is the acceleration due to gravity, in that case the ballast grain loses its uh, grain interlock. Due to this, there is a loss of horizontal and vertical strength resulting in issues um, with a track alignment and which leads to quick deterioration of the track. And there is, it also uh, leads to a risk of de derailment of train. However, in case of uh, ballastless tracks, uh, when a deck acceleration is greater than G, the contact between the wheel of train uh, and rail is lost, which also leads to quick deterioration of track. Usually it is assumed that uh, a single span uh, simply supported structures have less uh, or no dynamic, dynamic effect uh, of high speed train. But uh, it, contrary to this, uh, the single span structures are specially susceptible to resonance. So we will look uh, this in detail with an example where we have considered a single span bridge. However, resonance effects are significantly reduced on continuous structures. And it is found that the resonance speed lies somewhere between 200 km per hour to the between 200 km per hour and the design speed. Okay. Now uh, the question arises when we need to do, when we need to perform dynamic analysis, when it is necessary. So for this Eurocode has uh, given, provides us the flowchart for simple and complex structures to determine whether, to determine whether a dynamic analysis is needed or not. So below is shown is a flowchart uh, given in the code. So by simple structures, uh, code means uh, the beam between the supports. For structures which behaves such as grillage or orthotropic cable state or more complex behaviors are classified as complex structures. So basically, when uh, uh, the structure behaves like a beam between nodes, then it is called as a simple structure. So here uh, I have here, this is the flow chart for a simple structure. So uh, first thing is uh, the velocity. Uh, if velocity is greater than or less than 200 km per hour. So if it is greater than, and if it is a single structure, a simple structure, so in that case, we come to the span. So what about the span? If span is greater than or equal to 40, or less than uh, 40. So if it is less than 40, in that case, we move on to the fundamental frequency for flexure and torsion. So if the fundamental frequency of torsion is greater than 1.2 times that of uh, fundamental frequency for uh, flexure, so in that case, uh, we need to check uh, th this. And if it is, not greater than that. So in that case, we need for the dynamic analysis uh, should be performed using the eigenforms for torsion as well as bending. However, if this if this satisfies, in that case, eigenform for a bending is bending itself is sufficient. 
However, uh, usually we go for both uh, bending as well as torsion uh, eigenvectors to check the dynamic behavior <coughs> of our bridge uh, for the trade load. So uh, <coughs> we need to, once we do that, we need to check if our n naught is within limit limits or not. So for that, uh, this graph is given in Eurocode 1991. So here, based on your span and the fundamental frequency, we need to check if it is in this specified zone or not. Okay, so with this uh, flow chart, we find out whether uh, our structure, uh, do we need dynamic analysis in our bridge or not? Okay. <clears throat> So based on the earlier flowchart, we have decided whether we need dynamic analysis or not. So if we do not need dynamic analysis, in that case, we go for a static analysis in combination with dynamic amplification factor. So we run static, static train load and we amplify with dynamic magnification factor. However, if we <clears throat> need dynamic analysis, in that case, uh, we go for, uh, we check the most unfavorable value. Uh, we compare the static with the dynamic <coughs> and check if uh, whichever is the most unfavorable, we use that in our design. Okay, in addition to the dynamic analysis, we also need to perform the acceleration check. So more about acceleration check is shared in the next slide. So, <coughs> The main purpose of this acceleration check is to ensure the traffic safety and the Eurocode recommends uh, the acceleration of a ballasted track as 3.5 meter per second squared. So this is nothing but 0.7 G which we have discussed earlier with a factor of safety of 2 and uh, for, ballasted, for ballastless track uh, this limit is 5 meter per second squared which is nothing but uh, G with a factor of safety of two. For Eurocode UK and X, uh, UK and X uh, <coughs> asks us to calculate the peak value of bridge deck acceleration and the associated frequency limits uh, for each and every uh, in, for individual project. So we need to uh, calculate this for each and every individual project we are doing. And these above mentioned values, uh, which we have discussed now, are uh, with respect to the stability of ballast, track maintenance, as well as to avoid derailment of passenger. It does not deal with the passenger comfort criteria. Passenger comfort criteria is not covered in this uh, clause. Uh, <clears throat> passenger comfort criteria is covered in year 1990 2002. Uh, this clause which is mentioned here. Okay, so till now we have seen the dynamic, uh, the required when should we perform dynamic analysis and what are the checks we need to perform uh, when we perform dynamic analysis. Okay, so before performing any dynamic analysis, we need to perform a free vibration analysis on our structure. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, it is mandatory to perform a, a free vibration analysis before any dynamic analysis uh, we are going to perform. So, a few things uh, which we need to keep in mind. So, there are different types of eigenvalue analysis which are available in the program. So first, we see subspace iteration. So this is uh, more effective in case for large metric system. And if you go for uh, Lancos, so it is effective, uh, effectively used under lower modes. However, if you go for a rich vector, it produces more reliable results with fewer modes. The number of modes generated is less. However, for this, we need an initial Load. And, okay. and before running eigenvalue analysis, uh, masses have to be defined and they need to be converted into nodal masses. Okay, so 
that we will look uh, into further detail later. And we can see the mass participation for each mass participation factor for each and every mode sheet which we have defined. Okay, now uh, we we might be wondering like what should be the maximum for how many number of frequencies do we need to run this eigenvalue analysis? So for this, uh, Eurocode has provided certain guidelines. Okay, so frequencies uh, to be considered should be greater of 30 hertz. So till 30 hertz, any number of frequencies whose fundamental frequency is okay. The mode shapes till 30 hertz for which the frequencies is less than 30 hertz. Or we can go for 1.5 times uh, the fundamental frequency, fundamental mode of vibration of the member being considered. Okay, the frequency of the third mode of vibration of member. So for now we are going for a simply supported bridge. So in that case, uh, we will go for this criteria where we will consider the number of mode shapes whose frequency is less than 30 hertz. Okay, and uh, in case for N0 and NT need to be uh, identified for the criteria which we have discussed earlier where we check if that uh, torsional fundamental frequency is greater than 1.2 times the uh, flexural fundamental frequency. Okay, so as I told you earlier, the mass need to be considered into nodal mass when we perform a free vibration analysis. So here, when, so in the structure type, you can see there are various options available. So when we go for lumped mass, in that case, mass directly distributed to the nodal points of element. Now to convert this self weight to nodal mass, uh, lumped mass, in that case, we need to check on this option in structure type. And uh, there may be loads which are non-structural, uh, loads coming from non-structural elements. So they can be directly converted to load to masses using the load to masses option. So here we can specify those loads and convert them into nodal, uh, nodal loops. Okay, and there might be cases where masses cannot be converted to, uh, masses that cannot be converted. Okay. In that case, they can be directly applied using the nodal masses feature. Okay. Hope this makes sense. Now, coming to the consideration of masses. So, for the estimation of mass, a lower bound estimate uh, predicts the maximum deck acceleration. And uh, a upper bound estimates, estimation of mass is used to predict the lowest speed at which at which the resonance effects are likely to occur. Okay, so we need to check for both lower and upper bound because both uh, gives us <coughs> uh, as the lower bound predicts the maximum deck acceleration and the low and the upper bound predicts the lowest uh, velocity at which the resonance occurs. And uh, for ballast consideration of ballast. Minimum likely a clean density and minimum thickness of ballast should be considered and maximum saturated density of dirty ballast will with allowance for future track lifts. And other superimposed that need to be considered are rail, sleeper, parapet. So for a pre-vibration analysis, the consideration of mass and stiffness are the main thing. So now uh, when we come to the stiffness, so any overestimation of bridge stiffness will overestimate the natural frequency of the structure and speed at which the resonance occur. Hence, a lower bound estimate of stiffness throughout the structure shall be should be used. And regarding the cracked stiffness, uh, assessment of cracked stiffness is essential since a reduced cracked stiffness uh, lead to a lower fundamental frequency, hence a lower resonance speed. So uh, once the load data and eigenvalue analysis in the data are set up, we can get into defining uh, the type of time history analysis we are interested in performing. 
one advantage of time history analysis in MIDAS is one can consider different types of time history analysis in the same model. Uh, for example, if you want to study a comparison between different uh, time speed with a single base model, one can define different uh, time history load cases for different speed and compare them in the same model. Now coming to the types of analysis, time history analysis, which we can perform. So uh, basic difference is linear and nonlinear. So under linear, we can go for modal direct integration, transient and periodic. And for nonlinear, we can go for modal direct integration and static. So when we go for modal uh, uh, analysis method, in that case, we need to define, uh, we need to perform eigenvalue analysis. However, in case of uh, direct integration, we don't need uh, eigenvalue analysis. Okay. And coming to time history type, which is transient and periodic. So in case when we have a periodic loading, such as machine loading, where the, the load forms uh, follows a certain cycle, in that case, we should go for a periodic time history type. However, in case of uh, loads which are not uh, periodic or cyclical such as earthquake load or in this case uh, the train load for that we need to go for a transient uh, uh, transient type of uh, time history okay so here you can see the examples are given for machinery and pedestrian crowd loads and for transient we have earthquake train loads pedestrian walking jogging loads okay now, what consideration should be done uh, regarding the time history analysis for high speed rail? So, should we go for linear or nonlinear type of time history? Generally, the structure behaves uh, within the linear range, hence, we should go for a linear time history analysis. Modal or direct integration. So, modal integration should generally be used with first mode of structure in accordance to the PS code, PS uh, Euro code. Okay, transient or periodic. So as you have discussed, this is a transient train load will be a transient load, hence, hence transient type. Uh, regarding the time step, so here, uh, <clears throat> what time step should be considered for uh, this, uh, the time increment basically, what time increment should be considered for this time history load case. So basically there are no guidelines given in the Euro code. However, the committee ERRI DT214 recommends a uh, <clears throat> few, makes few recommendations regarding the time step and it states it should not be greater than uh, these values which are given here. So here where F is the maximum frequency used on the modal analysis and L min is the minimum span of the bridge and n is the number of modes uh, which we have used for analysis and v is the train speed okay so for our analysis we will consider 0 0.001 seconds okay so one of the complicated uh, considerations in the analysis is that of damping so damping is the effect which helps in diminishing the applied force. So if not considered, then say when a particular load is applied, the structure will never stop displacing. So it is important that we consider how damping is internally reflected within the software. So talking about damping, either the load could be damped or the inherent material property of the structure could uh, induce damping. But uh, when we say uh, inherent material properties, a particular structure con constitutes of different materials, and hence it might become difficult to specify this property to uh, each and every part of the structure. So uh, usually we go for uh, modal damping. So basically there are four ways in which damping uh, can be considered. We can go for modal, we can go for mass and stiffness proportional, strain energy proportional, 
and uh, element mass and stiffness proportion Rayleigh damping so for our case we will be going for a modal damping and uh, Eurocode also helps us uh, to based on uh, helps us to decide the damping on material and span width and uh, this is based on material and span length so basically what type of bridge so for us is it's a pre-stressed concrete bridge and our span is greater than 20 meters so the damping considered should be one percent or 0 0.01 okay so uh, like this we can consider the damping now coming to the dynamic loads on the bridge so in the latest version there have been developments on creation of dynamic nodal loads for train load so earlier what we used to do with the train load generator we used to generate a file for a dynamic nodal loads and we used to import them and create a train function we used to create a time history function which we used to create which we used to create dynamic nodal loop. However, with the latest development, we don't need to do all those things. We can directly specify the point A and point B between which the train is going to run. And we need to specify the speed uh, of the vehicle and the vehicle axle load. And based on uh, these, uh, the, uh, the dynamic nodal loads will be created automatically. So we can first we can define uh, tracks without considering the length of element along the track. So earlier we used to consider the length manually and based on that we need to calculate. Uh, now this process has been automated and is taken care by the software. And then auto generating the time force uh, time forcing function and dynamic nodal loads representing the moving train load. So earlier we need to calculate, we need to generate a time forcing function as well as the dynamic total loads manually. Now it has been done, it has been automated and it can be easily done using this feature. So we will look uh, more into this when we move on to the demonstration part of the presentation. Okay then uh, what are the train loads that we need to consider uh, for our dynamic analysis so for this uh, we are going to consider uh, as per euro code they have specified hslm a and hslm b uh, for which we need to perform the dynamic analysis and for hslm a there are 10 variations a1 to a10 so we can consider any of them for our dynamic analysis. So ideally we should run the analysis for all the 10 of them and find which one is the most critical. And HSLMA should be used when spans are over 7 meters, a complex structure. So the structure which we have considered is a 40 meter span, hence it is more than seven meters. So we'll be considering this. And HSLMB is for simple structure with span less than seven meters. Okay, so and speed that we need to consider that is uh, 40 meter per second to 1.2 times uh, the maximum line speed. Okay, and the reduced speed steps in the vicinity of resonance speed. So we need to check for various speed intervals which one will cause the resonance effect on the bridge. Okay. Now coming to the demonstration part. So we are going for a simple single span uh, box girder bridge. Uh, this is a 40 meter box girder with its mid structure, uh, mid section as shown here and the end section as shown here. Okay, so now uh, let's move to the program now uh, where we will see how we can perform the dynamic analysis of the bridge okay so this is the structure on which we are going to perform uh, the dynamic analysis 
So let me turn on the boundary conditions. Okay, so this is a simply supported box girder. Okay, the sections which we have used are shown here. Okay, so these are the properties of the section which we have used. So here we have gone for a construction stage analysis. However, it will not affect as uh, we are going to run the time history in the post years. Okay, the loads that are applied are self-weight, SIDL, and pre-stressed load. Okay, so now the first uh, thing that, that we need to do is uh, to define the eigenvalue analysis for our bridge. So to do that, we need to go to analysis. I need to go to post CS for base stage for that. So now here I will go to eigenvalue. So here we'll go for line codes and the number of frequencies that we need to consider is seven. So this number of frequency, as I told you, I will keep the number of frequency that we need to consider is the maximum frequency is 30 hertz. So I have done the uh, pre-vibration analysis for this bridge and that number comes out to be seven for which the frequency is less, less than or around 30 hertz. Okay, now we need to convert the loads into nodal masses. So for that, we need to go to structure. We need to go to structure type. So here, uh, we need to go with convert self-weight into masses. So this will convert all the, the self-weight applied into masses, nodal masses. Okay. Apart from this, we have applied uh, SIDL wet uh, bearing course and SIDL crash barrier as well. So we need to convert these nodes, uh, these loads as well uh, into dynamic, uh, in, into nodal masses. So for that, we need to go to load, static load. And here we have an option for load to masses. Okay. Then we will, we have SIDL bearing course and SIDL crash barrier load. So we'll add these both and once we press OK, so you can see they have been converted into nodal loads, nodal masses. Okay, so the setup for uh, eigenvalue is complete now. Now we can perform the eigenvalue pre-vibration analysis. So let's just perform the analysis. Okay, so analysis is complete now. It took around 13 seconds to complete this analysis. Now we will go to results. Here we will go to vibration mode shapes. So this is my first mode shape. This is in vertical bending, or vertical direction. The second one is for transverse bending. Third is as well. We can see the summary of all the mode shapes by pressing this three dot button. So here you can see the, fund, the frequency for the seventh mode is 30.34 Hertz. Now, 
so these are my seven modes and here I can see the mass participation of each and every mode shape so you can see the first mode uh, is has the transverse translation z direction the most mass has participated in transverse z direction and for bending in y rotation y the first the third mode shape is the governing one and there is no mode shape in the torsion torsion of the section okay so we will be running this time history analysis for uh, bending flexural uh, fundamental fractional funda fractional frequencies okay so now to initial view now that we have performed uh, the eigenvalue free vibration analysis now it's time for us to define a uh, time history analysis on the bridge so for that first we'll go to load we will go to dynamic load here first we need to define a time history load case okay and we will be running this time history uh, function uh, the time ST uh, we'll be performing the dynamic analysis for HSLM uh, A1 okay so I will name this as well as A1 okay and as you have discussed earlier we, this will be a linear type of analysis and analysis method we will go for is modal and the time history type will be transient okay and the end time let's keep it as 30 and time increment i will keep it as 0 0.01 second ideally we should have kept at 0 0.001 but that will increase the analysis time so i will keep it at 0 0.01 as per the recommendation from errri committee Okay, then uh, coming to the damping ratio, we will go for a modal damping ratio and I will consider a damping ratio for all modes as 1% as per the Eurocode guidelines. Okay, and make sure this end time should be uh, more than the loading, uh, loading time on the bridge. Actually, this should be a little bit more so that uh, it gives time for the bridge to for the deck acceleration to die down okay so basically suppose if you have around 10 seconds so it should be more than 10 seconds of loading time so it should be more than that okay so that's why i have given 30 seconds so yeah so first i have defined the time history uh, load case now now it's time for us to define the time history uh, load on the bridge so for that we'll go to dynamic load so here there is an option this is the new development which has happened uh, recently in version 2021 v1.1 which is of the train load generator so here if we click on this so here earlier we used to specify the spacing between nodes and we used to specify the axle load based on that the function for uh, the dynamic load used to generate and then we used to import that to create the forcing function uh, for time history forcing function and then based on the spacing and speed of the train we used to create uh, different nodal loads with different arrival times so all that process was manual earlier, which has been automated with this uh, train load generator feature. Okay, now we just need to specify the start and end point between which the train is going to run, which in our case will be this point and this point. And then we need to specify uh, the dynamic load case, vehicle type. So uh, here for Korean code, uh, certain vehicles are available. However, we can create user-defined vehicle as well. Then we need to specify the train velocity. 
at what velocity the train is going to run. So for this case, let's consider a 250 kilometer per hour velocity. So for that, I will name this as just LM T1. Kilometer per hour velocity. Okay. And uh, the direction, the start time, I will keep it as zero, and the direction will be minus z. So here, either I can create Excel. Uh, I can create uh, the Excel loads here using these fun functions or I can create the loading in Excel as well. So for HSLM A1, I have created the Excel loads in Excel and I will be importing this here using this import feature. So here Sorry. So here you can see I have imported uh, this Excel form, uh, these Excels from Excel, these loads from Excel. Okay, now I need to specify where between which two points my load is going to run. So I will select the start point and the end point. Okay, so once this is done, now I can save as this file as well so that I can use this again in some time later in the future. Now if you press OK. Now you can see all these uh, dynamic loader. These are the forcing functions which have been created automatically by the program. And these dynamic nodal loads are also created with a changing arrival time. So you can check these nodal loads. Okay. So these are the nodal loads with changing arrival time and scale factor. Okay, so you can see the total loaded time is 57.57 seconds okay so this is how uh, this uh, it has been easily created by the program earlier all these things used to be used to do it manually now uh, the definition for time history analysis is complete now we just need to run the analysis and view the results. Now our analysis is completed successfully. Now we can go to results and we can check acceleration legends at various time okay how's the deck acceleration changing with load we can check that for various time forcing functions Okay, we can see the envelope of all the results as well. So if you go to deformation here, if I select time history case and if I select maximum in DZ direction. Okay, so if you see here yeah, maximum occurs at 
node number 10. So if I select where my node number 10 is, so this is my node number 10. Okay, so maximum acceleration is 4.57, uh, 573 meter per second square. Okay, so it is difficult to interpret it this way. So we can, the easier way to interpret it is with graph. So here I can define a time history graph. Okay, node number will be 10. This will be acceleration in DZ direction. Okay. Back acceleration. Okay. Go back. Now I will, okay, this is already added now. Graph title will be acceleration number of decimal points i'll keep it as one horizontal axis will be time okay then we can go to graph option so now this is how the graph looks like you can see the maximum acceleration is four point 573 at 0.48 uh, seconds okay and uh, this is occurring at node number one so this is how we can plot the deck acceleration versus time similarly we can plot for velocity as well as displacement uh, using this function then we have a time versus frequency Time and frequency. This is a Fourier transform for uh, acceleration with respect to frequency. We can zoom in that, and we can see at what frequency this peak is peak in uh, acceleration coming. So here you can see the frequency, which is around 27 hertz. You can zoom this out. So another peak is coming here, which is around 3.8 hertz. So like this, we can plot the curve for acceleration versus frequency and acceleration versus time. Okay. And then we can compare this with our static analysis and we can see which one is more governing uh, in dynamic analysis or the static analysis. So this is how we can perform the dynamic analysis uh, using time history uh, function in meta civil now we have already seen uh, the results for vibration mode shapes we can check the mass participation for each and every mode shape then uh, we as per uh, as far as peak tech acceleration is concerned we need to check SLS check. We need to perform the SLS check uh, to prevent track instability. And then we need to check the maximum displacement as well, as, as well. And then we need to check the passenger comfort criteria as per uh, Euro code 1990. Okay, so basically dynamic analysis is more important to ensure that the serviceability checks are met. Uh, which is the maximum deformation to pre prevent the track instability and foremost uh, is the pa passenger comfort criteria as well so we need to check that as well and uh, deck acceleration against frequency we can also review peak ac deck acceleration against frequency to make sure uh, excitation of load does not match with the natural frequency if it matches, then we could uh, it would then it would result in resonance. And all these results can what we have seen are in graphic as well as table can also be exported to Excel. Okay, so this was our today's presentation regarding the dynamic analysis of railway bridges as per Eurocode. And we saw the latest development in MIDAS related to 
the dynamic the node dynamic node generator so if you now if you have any questions related to the presentation we will discuss now so there are few questions uh, that have been raised so i will cover few of the questions that have been asked till now so one of the questions that have come uh, quite frequently uh what could be the alternate what could be some alternatives when uh, the ac acceleration limit is overpassed just a moment yeah so basically there can be various uh, alternatives uh, to reduce that acceleration so basically there can be modifications made to the mass stiffness and damping of the structure so uh, we can increase or reduce mass to modify the mass matrix and uh, we can change the stiffness uh, of we can modify the stiffness to which in turn will modify the frequency and with it will avoid the resonance condition happening in the bridge we can uh, modify the damping of the structure as well by providing viscous dampers tuned mass dampers pendulum dampers uh, and such and like that and in that way we can uh, like avoid the resonance condition and reduce the acceleration uh, that is uh, coming in the structure and uh, one user asked how a simply supported uh, structure is the best so basically we didn't say that simply uh, simply supported structure are the best basically they are more susceptible to dynamic impact due to the train load um, then uh, does it matter if cumulative mass participation has not reached 90% yeah so that depends on requirement codal requirement so basically uh, some of the codes uh, ask for 90% mass participation to be achieved. However, in Euro code, uh, the guidelines are that uh, fundamental uh, the frequencies which are less than 30 uh, need to be considered as we discussed in the presentation. And there are two more criteria that we need to take uh, into consideration uh, for mass participation, the number of frequencies to be considered. Uh, normally, the type these types of analysis produce a huge number of files uh, of a few GB. Is there a way to request only the uh, result you need without having to store unnecessary data in the output file? Yeah, I agree. Uh, time is like these types of time history analysis or moving load analysis takes a lot of time as well as they produce large number of data. However, there is no way around if the bridge structure is large and has large number of members and nodes it will take that much amount of time and that much amount of files will be generated for that yeah there is one good question here uh, for a larger model previously i have run into problems where i cannot include all HL hslm uh, trains that are a1 to a10 uh, all are and at all required speed from 40 meter per second to 1.2 times the design speed at 10 kilometer per hour increments so uh, i think earlier you used uh, the excel to generate the dynamic nodal load however uh, like now as i have told you we don't need to go with uh, the dynamic uh, uh, with the excel thing we can directly generate the dynamic nodal loads using uh, the strain load generator function so now there is no limit of the number of rows that you can execute here so you can directly create as many number of dynamic nodal loads directly using this strain load generator data so you have uh, your you can create so here 
like I have created one uh, wizard file for HSLMA1. So you can create HSLMA1 to A10 and then you just need to change the velocity uh, as required and with respect to that all the dynamic nodal loads will be created for you. So we don't need to earlier this whole process was to be done manually. So we used to create uh, the loading function uh, and then we used to create the dynamic nodal loads with increments, manual increments. We used to calculate and do it in Excel. However, uh, with this new feature, uh, we don't need to do all that work. Here directly we can create this dynamic nodal load by changing the velocity. So th there is no limitation as such. However, the uh, processing time will increase. So one way how I would approach is I will create 10 different models for A1 to A10 and each, uh, each single model I will create uh, uh, 10 different cases for different uh, different cases for different speeds so each model will have one for a1 a2 and a10 like that and i would go in that way so that will be more easy for me to interpret uh, can you show a dynamic analysis of trust type of bridge so uh, the process will remain quite similar to what we have done as of now. The, we, uh, the procedure will be remain same. We have to perform the eigenvalue analysis. We have to find out the fundamental frequency of your bridge. We apply the dynamic nodal loads, create the dynamic nodal loads as we created for this. So procedure wise, there uh, will be no difference. Uh, the process will remain just the same only the modeling will change so that you can find for modeling you can find tutorials online for uh, trust bridge model modeling Uh, Yogesh has asked, can we run this vehicle on a curved bridge? Yeah, you can run on the curved bridge. That is not an issue. So if you have modeled the uh, bridge in curvature, uh, that will not be an issue. However, for the centrifugal force, you need to create a separate function for that. So here I have created only vertical loads. It has not taken into account any centrifugal load. Only displacement and allowable deck acceleration need to be checked. Is there any other criteria? Uh, as far as serviceability is concerned, we need to check the deformation and uh, the deck acceleration for uh, uh, serviceability as well as for comfort criteria as we have discussed earlier. I'm aware of only these two criteria need to be checked. If you are aware of anything else, kindly let me know. Uh, can you tell the difference between element temperature load and temperature gradient load in MIDAS? So basically that's not, it's not in scope of this webinar. However, I'll just let you, I'll give you a brief. So element, uh, when we go for element temperature load, in that case, a uniform temperature is applied on the whole element. However, when we go for a, a temperature gradient, so in that case, we can go for, we can apply a temperature profile. So which will be varying from top to bottom. So here we can apply the load temperature load in three types. One is this element temperature load where you give a temperature that uniform temperature will be applied to your whole section. Then we go for a gradient where you will give a variation from top to bottom how the temperature varies. And then we have this uh, beam section temperature where you can create any non-linear type of profile of temperature. So you can refer to the online help manual. So there you will get all these things in more detail. You can go through uh, this in more detail, how, what each and each function does. So yeah. Uh, then, yeah, so, 
thank you all for attending this presentation we have i have covered the uh, i have, have able to uh, take as many questions as possible still if there are few questions which are not answered kindly log on to global support dot and create a query we try to answer them as soon as possible and resolve your queries and thank you all for attending this session i hope it was helpful and uh, have a nice day thank you